Hi everyone, welcome to the Create and Learn channel where we make magic with technology. Today, as you probably guessed, we are building a Hogwarts sorting hat. So we're going to be using our Python skills to use and I'm really excited and hope you are too. All you need today is a coding template and you can follow along step by step. So the first thing we always have to think about when we create a project is do we have the tools that we need? In this case, we need to import packages. What is importing? It simply means borrowing code. In this case, we actually want to borrow some code from random package, time package, and the turtle package. We also want to borrow all the helpful commands and functions from the helper.py file. You can always see the helper.py file at the very top, right next to main.py. Next, we are going to let the Hogwarts sorting hat talk. In other words, we want to let it introduce itself, and it's also a way to set up the game so when someone plays it or runs your code, they can actually look forward to it. There's also some suspense that you're building up using some um, visuals. In this case, we have a helper function called setup. It's found in helper.py, and it returns two objects, a turtle object and a screen object. Turtle objects are useful for drawing. Screen objects are useful for controlling the display, like the background color. And we simply are going to be using this function by calling the command and setting it equal to two variables, t and screen. Once you hit run, you can actually see the magic come to life. You'll see that Hogwarts, the sorting hat, is singing a song. It's pausing in between every line in the song. And finally, we see Harry Potter. Awesome. So what's the next step? Well, we want to go ahead and figure out the user's preferences. When I say user, it's whoever's going to be running your code and interacting with it. Do they like scarlet and gold? Do they like emerald green and silver? And you might be wondering, where am I getting these color combinations from? And I encourage you to check out the Hogwarts houses um, colors. Each house, whether it be Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, Slytherin, or Gryffindor has their two special colors. Um, that represent their house, right? So what you want to do is really simple. Go ahead and write print statements. You want to first start it off by um, telling the user what is the question you're asking them. In this case, here's an example that I've written down here. You can add emojis if you want. After that, you just have to list out the options. Um, it would, it's a good practice to make it simple for the user. So that they simply have to type A, B, C, or D to choose what's your favorite color combo. Finally, you want to use the input command to store their answer. And you also want to ensure that you convert it to uppercase just in case they type to lowercase letters. Finally, just to be extra safe so that, you know, in our code, what if someone types something silly? Right? What if they literally type something very silly? <laughs> like cookies or donuts or, I don't know, bananas or something really random or just complete gibberish. They just wrote a bunch of random letters on the screen. Well, these would be invalid answers, right? We are looking for A, B, C, or D. So you can write a simple while loop that uses a list that simply checks, is the answer inside this list? If yes, okay, then nothing happens. But if not, you can ask the user to type a correct um, option so that the code doesn't break later on and answer the variable um, stores either a b c or d and nothing surprising the next step is actually very similar we want to now ask them for personality traits that might describe them the reason for this is hogwarts houses represent different strengths. So we want to try to use that um, in this game as well. So simply using print statements just like before, write out four options that represent Hogwarts houses from Gryffindor all the way to Slytherin. Make sure to just tell the user to type in a simple number. And you want to use input for this. And after that, make sure to convert the variable that you use to store the answer from input to an integer. Lastly, just like before, we want to double check if someone accidentally typed something silly. So again, we'll use a while loop and a list to ensure that answer is in one of the valid options. Let's pause here for a moment. Just want to highlight that 
we are converting a variable to an integer in two different styles in this code. At 33, we're using a style where it's kind of like pushing a command inside of another command. Um, or think of it as combining two commands. This is sometimes called nesting functions. While in line 36 and 37, we're doing it one line at a time. We first ask for input, we store it into a variable, and then in line 37, we convert the variable into an integer. So you can choose either style, it's really up to you. Do you like combining commands, kind of putting one command inside another, or do you like leaving them separate so that it's clean and easy to read? It's really um, a style choice, so it's completely up to you. All right, now we're on to the very important step, which is taking decisions. Okay, how do we do this? Well, first we wanna store the answer from before and use both to take this decision. One awesome way to store multiple objects is a list. So we'll make a variable that is a list. And we also need to prepare for the case where what if someone doesn't perfectly fit in? What if they didn't perfectly you know, match the colors of each Hogwarts house and didn't perfectly match the personality strengths. Well, in that case, we can just roll a four-sided die, pretend you have a four-sided die, and you roll a number, and based on the number, that person gets placed into a Hogwarts house. So we'll save that for later, but for now, you want to create a dictionary that maps numbers to Hogwarts houses. Okay, after that, we're going to have to use if elif statements to make sure to make the right choice for each person that plays this game. Before we dive into this, you just want to make sure what are we checking for? Well, we want to make sure that if someone answered A and 2, they're a Gryffindor. Right? So if you take a look at this table, if someone answered green and silver, ambitious, clever, and driven, we want to place them in Slytherin, D1. And so forth. B4 goes to Hufflepuff, C3 goes to Ravenclaw. So now we can go ahead and write the code. It's pretty simple. You want to check if combined, the variable, which is a list, is equal to A2. Then we want to reset the screen so that you remove the image of a Harry Potter. Instead, you kind of have a cool animation. So you use draw Gryffindor. And this is where we pass in the T variable and the screen variable from early before in this video. Finally, we print out, in my, in my case, I used all capital letters, the name of the Hogwarts house. And you repeat this for all the houses. Notice I use L of statements. And at the very end, you might be wondering, should I use an else? Or at the very bottom, instead of L of combine is equal to C3, should I use else? Actually, no, because if you do use else, that means anyone that doesn't fit in to like one of the Hogwarts houses, like they answered something different, like A comma four or D comma two, that doesn't cleanly place them in a Hogwarts house. They'll be automatically placed in a Ravenclaw. And we don't want that. That's not fun. That means I can predict how the game will go. So we'll see in a bit how we will address this. So first, you want to say else to represent the fact that this is the other case where someone's not a perfect match. And after that, you want to roll a random number. How do you do that? Well, in Python, we can use the randint function from the random coding package we imported as one of the very first steps. So once I do that, I can simply say randint one comma four. Then I can retrieve that value associated with this number from the dictionary earlier. And this is going to be the Hogwarts house. Next, using a series very similar to earlier of if elif statements, we can simply identify which house someone is in by using the variable that we just stored from the dictionary. Based on the house, we can draw the right animation. Of course, reset the screen beforehand with t.reset. Finally, print to the screen the choice. So notice in my case, you can also copy paste from before, just being very careful about indentation. It's a really similar structure. Right? The only difference here is that we are not checking if the answer is 
D comma two or C comma three or anything in the list, we're just simply um, checking the house variable that we just created. Okay, and guess what? You are all done. So the last part is you want to let someone play this game, you know, whether it's your friend or you want to show anyone um, this game and allow them to check it out. What you first want to do is make sure you save your code. Click share, very top, click link. Then you can say show output only and hide the code. You take this link and simply go to a new browser, sign out from this so you see what someone else sees. Copy paste the link at the very top. And ta-da, you have your completed Sorting Hat project. Hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And hope to see you next time for more awesome, fun projects just like this. And of course, if you want to take some lessons or at least get a intro to Python, we have a free Python intro class that you can um, get a feel for what coding is like and try out different animations and drawing. And after that, we have four levels of Python that you can always choose from based on your interest. Awesome. So that's it for now and hope to see you in another video.